Okay, good evening. Uh, Residents of Quorum Council present in time at 6 p.m. be it resolved this regular meeting be open for business via Zoom and that the minutes of the regular meeting of May 26, 2021 be approved. A mover and a seconder. Pat will move. Pat Cheryl, will move. Cheryl, Cheryl will second. second. Kevin, for or against? I'm for. Edith? In favor. Uh, Pat, you're in favor. Pat, in favor. Linda? Cheryl? In favor. I'm Dale? And I'm in favor. Motion carried. In regards to the consent agenda, has anybody got any concerns in regards to the count, sir? No. Nope. No. No. Nope. Nothing from Cheryl. Okay, be it resolved that items A1 contained in the consent agenda be adopted. A mover and a seconder. Deal move. I'll second. Kevin will second it there. And uh, yeah. Edith will move it there. Mm -hmm. Ke uh, Kevin, you're for it. I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat in favor. Glenda? Cheryl? In favor. Dale? And I'm in favor. Motion carried. Is uh, Glenda coming on board there tonight, there? I haven't heard that she isn't. Her and Dale haven't uh, logged on to this meeting as of yet. Can we hold off on that resolution there in regards to Kamloops? Because I got a couple concerns there as well there. Okay, she's yeah, actually. Glenda's coming on right now, so I'll just okay. uh, unmute her. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm just on the way into, um, I'm on call. So I just wanted to let you know that I tried to be at the meeting, but I'm not able to be. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah. So I'm just getting out of my vehicle as we speak. Okay. <laughs> well, we're at um, A2, Glenda, with the resolution that you had requested be um, okay. drafted as a proposed alternative to the one that was circulated to council. Yes. Okay. So any thoughts on that or? Um, yeah, personally, I'd like to end it at Indigenous uh, well, actually, in the, yeah, we extend our sincere, sincere condolences to all of the Indigenous. Uh, we don't really need to have people in their communities and who are in any way affected because, believe me, they're all affected in a lot of different ways. So, yep, that's uh, fine. I, th I, th I thought we should just cut it short there. Uh, that's just my thought. Anyone else? In, in regards to the first to be resolved, the Township Sable Spanish River acknowledges, uh, could we just put the discovery of 215 unnamed uh, children? We don't know if it's just children. There could be adults there or seniors there. I know um, it's horrific. It's horrific there, but is it, could we just put a discovery there and then uh, we'll, uh, six months later, we'll find out exactly there what is uh, mm -hmm. what is the count there and what is the age and everything there because I think there's too many unknowns. I know it's horrific there because there was no markings there, but still. I see, I see what you're saying there. So it would go, the mass grave discovered at the former residential school site in Kamloops. Is that what you're yes. getting at? Yes, yeah. yes. That sounds I, good. Yeah, I so I, I will, I'll amend this to read that the, be it resolved that the Township of Sable Spanish Rivers acknowledges the horrific dis discovery of a mass grave site at the former residential school yep. and that our condolences go out to all um, residents people. whose lives have been impacted by this. No, no, not no. impacted. No, okay. all Indigenous people. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so but it's not just, in, it's not just Indigenous people oh. there. It's everybody, really. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I know, but this is really, it, it's, it's, we're, not, it's, we're uh, not talking about white people here. Right? No, it, and but for, first of it's all, it's culturally they don't sensitive. Yeah. 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 So, so I think we should be sure of our facts before we, we have to be really careful on our statement because we're not even sure what the exact facts are as yet. We're not. So we so, could just say well, that we extend our condolences to all affected. Yeah. Yes. And we know, because it's not going to be, it is mainly the Indigenous people, but I mean, it's a horrible thing to discover. And they don't know all the details yet. That's what I'm worried about. Like, you have to well, kind of just do a general statement, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. This is. I think it. that it needs to be specific to be culturally sensitive, and yeah. I also know that um, the research that I have gotten, which is um, validated, it uh, the remains were children um, due to the size of the bones and stuff. So. Well, yeah, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. So. If you want to shorten it to indigenous people, that's fine. But we do have to recognize the yeah. culturally sensitive uh, atmosphere that we're dealing with right now. Yeah, I agree. Well said, yes. So do you so, want to read that again, Kim, please? Okay. So be it resolved that the Township of Sable Spanish Rivers acknowledge and are deeply saddened at the horrific discovery of the mass grave at the former residential school site in Kamloops, BC, and that we extend our sincere condolences to all of the indigenous people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. We can live with that then. Can, good. Can we have a mover or a seconder? I'll move it. I'll move. Okay. I'll second, Glenda. Has anybody got any other comments? Okay. Seeing none there. Kevin, you're for? I am for. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat in favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? And I'm in favor. Motion carried. In regards to the application for the, the Massey District uh, Community Center there for WSP, anybody got any concerns there? This is for the Massey Medical Clinic. Medical. Okay. The clinic. Yeah. Yes. Sorry about uh, that. Is the doctors and uh, uh, Marla there and the nurse practitioner involved in this or? I'm, I, I advised Marla that we were doing this and I sent her the RFP and I had also let the uh, consultants know who received this that if they had any questions or wanted to schedule a site visit uh, that they were to contact her and she was involved in all of our email correspondences. Perfect. Yeah, that was in the paperwork, right? That they're in the yeah lineup. Well, it was good of them to at least give us uh, an idea. None of the other companies did, right? So, sorry, that's my car. <laughs> Anybody got any other concerns? No. Okay, be it resolved that the proposal from WSP be accepted in an amount of $6,060 to complete the work program set out in the proposal for funding application preparation for the Massey Medical Clinic. A mover and a seconder? Cheryl will move. Cheryl, will move it there. Seconder? I'll second. Kevin will second it. Kevin, you're for it? I'm for it. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat in favor. Brenda. Oh, she's gone. Cheryl. In favor. And Dale. And I'm in favor. Motion carried. In regards to the public works meeting there, anybody got any concerns there? I got a couple there. In regards to the washrooms, if you uh, go, uh, anybody been to the Manitoulin Island there? 
their washrooms no. being open for the last couple of weeks there down in the town there by the the marina there no signage there and a spotless in there so on the manitou Island. so how come there we're all in the separate manitou district there how come we're not opening hours this summer we didn't say for the summer we just said at that time we were not opening them until they changed the state because we were still we're still in lockdown and i think an issue was sure. also the the manpower required for the sanitizing and cleansing that uh, we were low on students this year. And uh, that's a pretty big task to give a student this for this situation. I don't think students should be, but anyway, we are low on manpower. Yeah. That tourist center in Little Kearns though, isn't that run by the province? Yeah. No, the, one, the one by the water is run by the town of uh, Little Kearns. Yeah, oh, well, that's a little current. Money. That's not us. We just thought yeah, it was safe you, for not to. If you go farther over towards the Mindamoy as well. Yeah. Sorry, I popped out of there for, for a minute. I'm back. <laughs> okay, as long as there, we're going to we'll look at it there just in case there. We said we'd we revisit next meeting. Yeah. In did, regards did you hear to what we were talking the white about goods. No, I the didn't. Goods, sorry. In regards that, to the Kevin? white goods. I just, I wanted Glenda to know what we were talking about there. Oh, uh, okay. So the, the not, not having washrooms available because we don't have staff to clean them. And Les suggested that we should. Little Current is doing it. And what do you think no. of that? Glenda? No, no, we don't have any students and we don't have any that we can't tire staff up with that. And we have to follow the COVID guidelines from public health. So at this time, maybe in July, we could revisit it. But at this time, absolutely not. No. Agreed. Okay. July 21st, I believe is um, if we do OK, we'll be to the second stage of our reopening. So. Okay, as long as we keep looking at there because people walk down from the park there to do a economic development there to shop at our stores there and it's nice to have some place there for them to go to the washroom there before they try to get Absolutely, back to I agree, but uh, with the, rest the restrictions, we have to follow the guidelines and, and uh, keep everybody safe. So, and I don't and believe that we want to overtax our, our employees. And that basically means you're standing there waiting to watch somebody come out, go in and disinfect prior to the next. So it's a 20 exactly. job if you're truly following those guidelines. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. In regards to AMI uh, recycling, am I reading this right there? White goods, uh, no value? Uh, that's the message that I had received. They they, I don't know if uh, they should be in with the metal or not, but that's what the, the message had indicated was that tire and white goods are nothing this year. Well, I just took uh, two hot water tanks, two, uh, two gosh darn uh, washers and one dryer, and it gave me $85.31 for five pieces there. Okay, well, we'll follow white this up. Worth, white goods is worth $235 a ton here, and I can show the goddamn invoice there they gave me there. So, okay, and we'll follow it up. Recycling. We'll follow it up for confirmation. Yeah, because that, holy gosh, there cost us lots to run that dump there. Is that the same company, Les? Same company. Okay. AMI Recycling on uh, Kelly Lake Road. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, and I can imagine we've got a pile of white goods there too. Yeah, especially when you're getting over $16 a piece there for each item there. Yeah. In uh, uh, regards to, the, I see they put the 10 ton limit signs there, bridge there on Lee Valley Road. Last right, night, the highway, yeah. the highway was closed there by the barrel factory. We had transports down this road. Is there any chance of us getting signs on the river road? 
because yep. there was transports there. There was uh, big wreckers on this road there last night. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we can get some. We can get some printed for either end of River Road as well. Both hands there, so the people will know there because there's no way to turn around. No, you're right. Yeah. Well, did we not inform the OBP not to be sending transports down our River Road or Lee Valley Road? Well, it was specific to Lee Valley that time, but <clears throat> we'll remind them on this one again. Yeah, we don't want them on our back roads, like unless it's for deliveries or what pickup. Well, pulp, pulp like trucks milk, last night are not get for delivery there. Well, you should have called the OPP less, get them turned around. Uh, the traffic there was car after car after car. There was records there pulling trailers there. There was That's empty transports going west there. Anybody got any other concerns? Um, I had some, a rate pair contact me in regards to some signage that uh, disappeared on King Street at the end of King Street. Just wondering um, what happened to the signage there and that there's people sleeping there at night. So I'm just wondering if it could be just checked into. What was the signage, Glenda? Um, no parking. Um, Okay. What do you What do you mean by sleeping there at night? Um, like overnight, um, person wandering there and sleeping overnight. So you know, uh, a few know. nights in a row. It's not just one night. So, yeah. So, okay. um, and was do you it, know if it the is police, a dead end? So yeah. Do you know if the police were called for those instances? Um, the police were called for one, I believe. Okay. That's what I was told. All right. Okay, any other concerns, anybody in Public Works? We resolve the Tash Public Works uh, Committee meeting report of June the 2nd, uh, 2021 be accepted. Mover and a seconder. I'll move. Kevin will move it there. I'll second. Yes. Kevin, for or against? I'm for. Edith? For. Pat? Pat's in favor. Linda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? Now I'm in favor. Motion carried. In regards to the draft agreement with the Massey Agro Society, there, did everybody read that uh, memo there that uh, Kim sent there? Anybody got any concerns? Yeah. I. Uh... I would just like a little bit of explanation there. So basically this says that uh, the vendors would need to purchase insurance. That's correct. What this is, is it's an avenue to provide um, an insurance policy for otherwise uninsured vendors. So mm -hmm. someone who goes in who doesn't have their own insurance policy, they would be able to purchase one okay. through this this uh, facility user policy that the township has procured and it would okay. be based uh, okay. the uh, Ann and Amanda and I just had some training yesterday with regards to filling in and doing the log uh, input on the uh, computer software and um, there's different criteria of um, whether it's a sporting event or non-sporting event it's based on the number of attendees so for a farmer's market or a marketplace the Ag Society would have to give us a rough idea on what they think the attendance could be because nobody knows right now. Um, if it's an alcohol or a non-alcohol event, uh, and then you just, you could base that on how many hours they're planning on being on there. So if it's a four hour, I'm just giving you for a farmer's market uh, day, if it's a four hour event, and you consider there's a half hour before and after for setting up and taking down, that's five hours that they're looking at getting a policy for. And say there's going to be two to 500 people involved uh, throughout, that, throughout that day, uh, their, their premium would be $16 an hour for five hours. So two to 500, you're talking the public or vendors or both? Everybody going through. Oh, okay. um, just for an example, if it's one to 50 people, it's $5 an hour. Okay. 
Okay. So it would increase with the higher populated mm -hmm. events that there are. Yeah. yeah. And okay. like I had indicated in this in the staff report too, is that depending on what the, the vendor is selling, if it's a flea market type event, uh, their product may not be an approved uh, product through the insurance company, like homemade fireworks or something like that. You know what I mean? So are we, go so, are we so trying what to- was the first was, was it 16 bucks an hour and then five bucks an hour? Is that- Oh, I was just uh, going by the number of attendees. If it was one uh, to 50 yeah. people, then it would right. be $5 an hour. Right. If it and, was and two to 500 people throughout the day's event, it would be $16 an hour. Okay. And they'd be required to do this for each farmer's market event that they attend. Unless okay. they had their own insurance, Kim? Exactly. If they had yes. their own liability insurance, then they don't have to purchase this, correct? Correct, yes. And, um, what about also oh, they have to approve before they'll give them insurance they have to approve of what they're selling like if you're not a licensed food vendor um you well know what i mean do you know anything yeah. about that or well do we have we, to yeah. worry about that the, the chart we had to and we have um i had circulated also um when we reviewed yeah. this last fall before we purchased it what the coverage highlights were mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so some of the exclusions would be, like I said, those homemade fireworks, uh, um, skiing, boxing, a lot of things that aren't typically done here anyway. Yeah. If there's yeah. anything on this list that's not identified and we are unsure of when we fill out that uh, log, mm -hmm. then we'll just contact the insurance uh, agent. And they confirm. pay us and, and they yeah. pay the township and the township pays the insurance company. Yes. Township Correct. has paid, the township has paid a $750 deposit for this policy. Mm -hmm. So now going forward, every uh, user that we log into this policy goes against that 750. Mm -hmm. And for the year, if we log so many uh, that it goes beyond that 750, then the insurance company will charge us for what the additional will be. But it's, hey. at that point, it's an in out because we're we're accepting a premium from the vendors or from the users. Right. I think it's clear as mud. <laughs> well, it, it's messy. It, well, it's messy. insurance, right? And I think it's not what the Ag Society had hoped for or, or any of us hoped for. I yeah. Think. I, I mean, I mean, them. it was all explained last year, but I guess until you really, it gets down to the time that you really yeah. need to use it. Nobody yeah. really looks at the- I mean, it's the, better uh, than no options, right? I mean, yeah. it's better than not giving them an option at all. Uh, the like, thing is, I mean, if, help. if the township uh, um, entered into this agreement with the Ag Society, it would be a requirement that vendors have insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. The thing is though, you know, a small market like that, let's yeah. say somebody selling fruits and vegetables well, you know, four times 16 bucks, that could be all his profit for the evening, you know? So I don't know. Uh, well, I think one. it's a good idea to, if Tom is on here, maybe she can bring yeah, this information yeah. back to the Ag Society and we could have another meeting. Uh, yeah. in regards to this and go through it a little bit more in detail and uh, see what we can come up with. What do you I think, think it's good at least, yeah. Is that $16 per hour or $16 for the day? Per hour day. Say five hour day. Hour. It's hourly. Hourly? hourly? Yeah. 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 That's oh, not hourly, cool. right. Now, if, it was a, if it was a one to two day event, say it was like, you know, you, somebody rented the Sadowski room for a conference for two full days. That would be a three hundred dollar policy. Mm -hmm. So they'd be better off to actually have their own liability insurance. I think so. For like a five hour day. Even at even at five bucks for the smaller amount of people, and that's that's max fifty for the whole event. Yeah, it's five bucks an hour. That's not realistic. Max fifty. You know, you could have ten vendors, and it doesn't take long to have. 40 more people come through your market. It's just. Yeah. So bad. they'd be better off to go through their own insurance company, really, but the vendors, I mean. 
right off the bat, we're looking at, I would, I would say for sure more than 50 people on the grounds participating yeah. between vendors right. and people coming to shop. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, five hours, I mean, we're probably going to run it for longer than four hours. We're not going to run it for half a day. We're probably going to run it for six hours or something like that. Plus, this, uh, you know, a set up and knock down time yeah. will be a seven hour day. Well, when you multiply that by 16, they're not, they're not going to go for that. I'm sure. No, no. It won't even That's too much money. You, you could go and get, um, what is it? event insurance for the day well that's what i'm not that's what i'm saying they'd be better off, the vendors would be better off to get their own insurance yeah and i don't know if the vendors i mean if we've been through this with with the fair too because we also in, we also insist that when they the vendors at the fair have um insurance when they come in Mm -hmm. And their big cry is that it's too expensive for them. And, and we went and looked at it and said, okay, there's, I forget the name of the company now that you can go and get event insurance for a day. It's like 90 or hundred dollars for the day. Well, it would be cheaper for them to do that than to go get and to, to sign up for this. Um, and vendors for the fair were just adamant that no, they couldn't afford that. So I don't know if we're going to get like the Mennonites coming in. They're not, they're likely not going to go and get insurance at all. And we're going to require insurance. So I don't know how this is going to work out then. Kim, what does Blind River do at their farmer's market? I didn't call Blind River. I don't know who they have for an insurance provider. I, I, I think, to be honest, I think it's the best to present the information that we have to the Agricultural Society and then look at other options um, that maybe they can come up with. And in the meantime, find out who would be willing to get their own insurance before we move ahead with anything else, because we can't decide on this, obviously, tonight. So no. we're going to have to clarify some information for the Agricultural Society and tell them exactly what we can offer them well I have, and i'll I, take sorry. i'll take this back to them um but i'm i'm pretty sure that the vendors are not gonna want to go mm -hmm. along with this did they how much did they pay for insurance last year that was farmers we didn't have or, it last year because of COVID. Year before. and the year before we had a different insurance provider we have changed yeah. since then mm -hmm. and it was a totally different program it was a yeah. farmer's market back then not a flea market well style. right right now and i mean whether we have a farmer's market or a flea market it's going to depend on on the health unit and the provincial rules yeah. around covid yeah. so Regard, regardless can't of what, say what it's going to be regardless of what the event is going to be this is the user the yeah. user or facility user policy that council has purchased mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is how it operates um through the other insurance company, it was a different program where they offered it in a different manner. So, yeah. But it'd be nice to see what Little Current there and Blind River and Sault Ste. Marie doing there because they all have farmers market every Saturdays. But if they're yeah. not with the same insurance company, it doesn't really, if so, they're not with the insurance that we are, they all the have different issue. rules. Yeah, that's well, a whole issue. And, and is the municipality involved in those farmers markets? I don't know, but it's in their community, Sarah, so then I'd imagine they must be involved somewhat. Well, then we should reach out and see if, uh, you know, I don't know. Because it's their building to... here in uh, Blind River. We can do some research to see what other other uh, communities are doing. Yeah. yeah like there's oh, obviously a solution, uh, unless it's just a matter of the insurance company. And well, if that's That's the case, what it sounds like to me, yeah. Kevin. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, every, I know every most... uh, place has a different insurance company. So yeah, it's that all depends on what insurance our township carries and what insurance other towns carry. So it depends on what we can still, offer. Yeah, still reach out to them though. Like if yeah. there's an active market in Blind River and Little Current, if you can find out what's going on then. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
Well, does the Massey Agricultural Society, they have insurance for the grounds and all that that is your facility. I wonder if, if there would be a rider available under that policy. No, they didn't do, wouldn't do it, eh? Yeah. No, Are that's why it came to us. Yeah, that, that's why we were approached. Oh. Yeah. yeah. We've already spoken to our insurance company and they don't have anything like that that they can provide, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll put that, uh, postpone any decision on that till we get a better, mm -hmm. more information. Yeah, well, we have to do it in a timely manner too, so well, it would be a good only, idea to... The only new information I'll be able to bring back to council is what other communities are doing for insurance provisions, because what we have is the way it is. Exactly. Right. That's all we can yeah. give. And it's yep. better than nothing, but encourage us. the vendors to get their own insurance. I, that's the way most of those places go is the vendors come with their own insurance. Last, late, last year when um, the Egg Society approached us and asked us if it was possible to do a partnership for this purpose, um, we, I specifically reached out to the insurance company and gave the full scenario of how this is going to work, where it's going to be operated, and this is the, uh, this is the mm -hmm. policy that they have in place to cover it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Mama, if I could ask you something. Um, when you had that little market last fall, how did that, you know, how did you provide insurance for people then? That was a one-time event. Our insurance companies told us that for a one-time event, that as long as they they uh, took a membership out with the Ag Society, they would be covered. Yeah. Uh, however, for to run a weekly event, that doesn't apply. Oh well. Mm hmm Well, let's find out what other municipalities are doing there to see if we can help the, the small mm -hmm. businesses yeah. out there. Okay. And, and I'll, I'll take this back to um, Brian. Apparently he has six uh, vendors that have, have um, stated that they want to come to the market. So he can go back to them and, and see how they feel about these kind of insurance rates. But I'm I'm pretty sure that they're not going to go for it. No, it sounds outrageously expensive, mm -hmm. really, unless you'd be selling a couple of hundred bucks worth of goods in an afternoon. Well, and they will be, but yeah, well, yeah, I, but when it when it costs you eighty dollars for insurance, you're going to have yeah. to sell more than a couple hundred dollars worth of, of produce to make it worth your while even coming. Yeah. yeah, and that's only for four hours. So it may very well be reasonable to think that if they wanted to investigate getting an, their own insurance policy for the season, that it may be that more economical for them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I don't know if it's for for the season if they can even get one on through this kind mm -hmm. of event, event insurance. It could be per event. So I don't know. Well, let's do a little bit more homework there before mm -hmm. we. Uh, has anybody got anything else there for tonight, Jer? No. No. Kim? No, I don't. Just that the calcium started getting applied yesterday. There was unexpectedly <laughs> four loads all yesterday that came in. <laughs> so they scrambled to make sure they could utilize it all. Uh, there'll be so. another, another couple um, Friday, I believe. And then next uh, week, there's probably six more loads coming. So that Good. should finish our calcium. Anybody got anything else? Um, Les, uh, council. Yeah. I just want to remind everyone, uh, councillors, there is a Parks and Rec Zoom meeting next Wednesday night, correct? Yeah. Okay. I would appreciate. At six or seven, Cheryl. Six, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. I it is. All right. Thank you. Any uh, word on the speed signs? Kim, on the radar signs? Radar signs? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're ordered, so I'm not sure on delivery. Okay. Right. Thank you. I hope Jock has figured out a way to anchor them down so they don't get stolen. Well, the they're best ready. thing for this, they're supposed to be portable, but um, 
Um, with what I have seen for what we're purchasing, it's a six by six post that's in the ground that's going to hold these things. And okay. um, the budget was set for $6,000 and that was 3000 each to purchase two. Mm -hmm. I'm purchasing one. I want to see how it operates. I want to see how well it stands up. I want to see how long it stands up and is in place. Um, before, I mean, the pricing won't change this year. So I would like to give the first, it's a lot of money to spend when you don't know how it's going to operate or if it's going to be vandalized within the first week or, so yeah. I'd like to just get an idea of that first and, and let them set it up with the solar power and everything. And then I'll order the second one. <laughs> Maybe like we'll, have idea. To, we'll have to chain it to a loader bucket like the guys uh, working in Webwood did for the water trucks with the, they chained <laughs> their generator that they were pumping water out of the ditch with to a big loader bucket and it's sitting on the side of the road caddied west out of Webwood. It's hilarious. I go, oh, maybe that's what we should do with all our signs. <laughs> Kim, is it a company out of Sudbury? It's Canadian Traffic Supply. I've been dealing with them since last fall. They're the ones that gave me the most information and explanations for something I did, didn't know anything about. Yeah, because there's only a couple of companies there. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, Any other? Again, yeah, once again, thanks for putting out that letter uh, to the Massey people about the radon uh, situation yes. there. Uh, I mean, the, the company that did the job even specified that there was a, a vein of uranium there. So it's like, yeah. that's the least we could do is to give our people a heads up on their health and safety. So yeah, they were you. they were pleased to see what we were doing. They said we went over and above and we're happy to see that. That's good. good. Yeah. Awesome. Any other concerns, anybody? I, w I just want to say that it's going to be hard right now to check the radon in the homes with the, the way that windows are open and this and that. Apparently, it, it's an enclosed house is the best way yeah. to monitor it. Um, so. Yeah, the letter, yeah. the information they provided did specify that it's better to do in cooler weather when, you know, it's mm -hmm. more closed up. So, okay. Yeah. 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 I thought their letter was very good. Yeah, but they'll give them. It'll give them an indication if it's high or low there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's Anything like else, when, you, when, when you put that meter there, you're supposed to leave it in one spot for like a day or two and then move it around later on. So like, you know, I'm sure at some point they're going to get some kind of decent reading. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the whole open window situation is different. Yeah. It'd be nice to know At if least we got that problem across the whole North Shore. Well. I'm going to have to leave the meeting shortly there. So. Well, pro yeah. pro <laughs> probably in pockets here and there across the North Shore. You know, when you've got a big uranium deposit like Elliott Lake and even Agnew Lake, uh, stuff like that, it's possible. It's possible anywhere. Good for people to check. Yes, give them an idea there. Okay, be it resolved that the time is 6.39 uh, and this meeting be adjourned until the next regular meeting or the call of the chair. Mover and the seconder. I'll move it. I'll second. Kevin will second it there. Glenda will move it there. Kevin, yeah. for or against? I'm in favor. Edith? In favor. Pat? Pat in favor. Glenda? In favor. Cheryl? In favor. Dale? And I'm in favor. Motion carried.